Are we headed for a Banana Republic 2.0? My guest today, Gerald Chalente, founder and CEO of the Trends Journal. Gerald, good to see you. Great being on with you. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Diane. Well, of course I had to call you back on. I mean, who am I going to call? <laughs> who am I going to call after this election? I need to get your thoughts. We have a lot to, of ground to cover here today. Um, I say, are we headed towards a Banana Republic 2.0? This, of course, is the front page of the latest edition of Trends Journal. Um, your thoughts, Gerald? Yeah, we're there. Uh, and you go back, by the way, go back to last week when the Trends Journal came out on election day. Uh, we went totally against the polls. The polls gave Trump, uh, excuse me, Biden a uh, 10 to 8 point margin. And this has been going on now for what, seven months, eight months. And this, this other group, whatever they are, you know, 25, three, eight, whatever number they make up that everybody looks up to, you know, they had, they had Trump as a, you know, a 10% to 1% chance of winning. And we said it will either be a Trump victory or it'll be too close to call. You did. And we really put our neck on the line saying that because as you go to the trends journals, you know, I'm a political atheist. And if you look at the cover of last week's magazine, it was, we had the Donald against right. Goofy, you know, so it's not like we're taking a stand on this, but when we say the banana Republic, we're showing how really this country is so divided that all you have is negative media coverage of uh, a president that like we've never seen in our lives. And again, I'm no fan of this guy. I didn't, I didn't vote, by the way, I didn't vote for either of them. I don't vote for lesser of two evils. So, you know, just to make it very clear, you know, we're just calling it as it is. And the, the uh, outrage by the media of Trump continuing on and on didn't have a chance. This is really suppression of votes because a lot of voters would say, ah, the guy doesn't have a chance. Why should I go out and vote for him? And when you talk about a banana republic, I mean, look at these arrogant morons with their attitudes. They can't count votes. I mean, what is this, you know, 1623? You hear you could transfer trillions of dollars in milliseconds with blockchain technology, and then we're counting the votes, and we got all these people. You know, who are you talking to? I mean, that's what I was thinking this whole time. How hard is it to count votes? Yeah. I don't know. I've never done vote counting. Perhaps it's, it's extremely difficult. I don't know. <laughs> well, you have I to get a judge. PhD in it. You just can't count votes. You have to get a doctorate in vote counting. Ah. Yeah, I mean, again, who are these people think they're talking to? They're not talking to the people that are tuned in now. We're, we're people with brains that think for ourselves. And I got some little bureaucratic jerk give, throwing this crap out at me. And look what happened in Pennsylvania. Oh, you got to stand eight feet apart, no, six feet apart to look to see if they're counting it right. That is the banana republic of America. You saw those charts where all of a sudden, bop, it goes up like that in Wisconsin. Michigan and Nevada for, for Biden with what, like 130 votes to him and none for Trump? I mean, come on with this stuff. So, so, so what do you think happened then, Gerald? The game is rigged. Again, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I was there as a young guy seeing it. And it, by the way, it was the worst job I ever had in my life. And I started cleaning bars at 13 years old, you know. So I've been working all my life. And I watched grown men grovel to suck their way up to the top. We'd be, you know, young guys BSing in the back of the chamber. The guy, we hire some clown, some slob to open the door. Senator Jack Smith. And a guy comes in. My friends would leave me, go over to where he's sitting pull the chair back and help him sit down. You could blow on these chairs, these beautiful leather chairs they could sleep in. And they'd come back, I'd say, hey man, what's the matter? Cat can't sit down by himself, he needs some help. And they go, you know, Gerald, you have that kind of an attitude. You're not gonna make it here. Yeah, I didn't make it, I left. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not such the way I grew up. What I'm saying to you, Danielle, is yeah. the game is rigged. The people that are in charge rigged the game 
I've seen it firsthand. Okay, what do you say when, when to, to people who will say, well, Biden was, you know, and his team were telling people, vote by mail, vote by mail, whereas President Trump was saying, you know, don't, don't do that. And that's why you had, you know, such a huge amount of people voting by mail, and that's what caused perhaps the win. That's very correct. But again, the vote by mail thing is something that they just invented also with the COVID war to fight the COVID war. Don't go to the polls. Okay. So it's pushed by the Democrats. But Trump's 100, you know, he's, he hurt himself by saying that. But what he also said is that the mail-in ballots won't be, the mail-in ballots won't be valid. Let's, let's dig a little deeper with your thoughts on if the system is rigged, but then does it change to who's rigging it every four years, whether no. Republicans or Democrats win? Who's, who's rigging it? Which, Both. is who's it a party? Is it a third party? Who's ever in charge of the game? Again, if this was reversed, and let's say Biden lost the Republican states by a very little, and they were concerned about right. the ballots and this and that, they'd be screaming at them, no. Again, that's why I'm a political atheist. To me, the system is corrupt. Again, you know, it's, it's, to me, they're murderers and thieves. By their deeds, you shall know them. I want that guy Gaddafi at it. I don't like him. I want him out. I want that guy Assad out. Hey, let me tell you something. That guy, uh, uh, what's his name? Hussein, he has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. Yeah, I don't care if I don't have the proof. It's I'll just, make it up. Just... I got another one for you. Too big to fail. So they, they bail out, they do what they want, they're entrenched gangs. Jared, what's the point of democracy? It's gone. Democracy is spelling it wrong. D-U-H, democracy. <laughs> okay, Let, let's, uh, okay, Trump, uh, President Trump and his team fighting, uh, fighting, obviously, uh, you know, he's tweeting, we will win, uh, his team alleging wrongdoing in some uh, key battleground states. Uh, will he be victorious? Will this get anywhere? You know, how does this unfold, Gerald? Yeah, you know, it's too early to tell, but they're pushing forward with this. And again, you know, you had the 2020, 2000 election decided on hanging chads. I mean, you know, really, think about it. Hanging chads, they can't count the vote. You're calling this a democracy? How about a freak show? So where is it going to go with this? It's going to go to the Supreme Court. And then think about this. Kavanaugh, Barrett, and Roberts with three people that were on the George Bush team when they recalled the election in Florida in 2000. And now they're in the Supreme Court. So he has the team on his side. And the right. other thing to remember about Trump, you know, as a New Yorker, people don't, you know, you living in New York, you know New Yorkers are different. You know, they don't understand. This is the guy that built all these hotels and all this. You know the people that he dealt with, the mobs of this and that? These politicians are nothing to him. He's going to fight this to the end. They he don't will. get the mentality of him. He will. He will. So... I think there's going to be a lot of uh, a drama. Um, this is going to this is going to take a long time, Gerald. Yeah, it'll take it'll at least take up until uh, you know when it, they're supposed to uh, the electoral right. college and the rest of them are supposed to call it. But alas, the day after the election, we have a vaccine that looks ninety percent full foolproof, right? That it's working. Look at that timing, Gerald. I know. Are you, know. Are, are you going to be first in line for that vaccine? As I said on an interview yesterday, if little Andy Cuomo wants to come over here and try to vaccinate me, come over and try it. No way, no how, not going to happen. Oh, by the way, you know, I had a rally. I had a, several hundred people on the 4th of July to you restore freedom up here in Kingston. And the crap that I got for it because of the risk that I took and how endangered I put everybody's lives on is like they didn't have a choice to come there. So I died from the virus. This is not me. This is Salenti 2.0. He died. Look, the people that are dying from the virus, and we had this discussion way back when it began. In Italy, the average age is over 80. You have over 50% of the people worldwide are elderly people from nursing homes, type 2 diabetes, 
uh, obesity, lung disorder, according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, 94% of the people had 2.6 pre-existing chronic conditions on and on and on and on and on. And they're telling me I got to get vaccinated. Oh, by the way, the recovery rate for people one to 50 years old is 99.8%. And you're telling me you got to get vaccinated for this? No way am I getting vaccinated. And there's going to be a big anti-vax movement that's going to be a foundation for a new third party. You know, I was thinking about your father, actually, Gerald, um, the other day. I know you speak um, a lot about him, you know, off air to me, and you've written about him, and he's probably the greatest mentor in your life. And you've said he taught you not to be a papagallo and to really think for yourself. And that's, that's where Gerald was born, really, from, from that and Trends Journal. Uh, what do you think he would be saying about the United States right now and everything happening? Well, what he would be saying, it, my, 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 the whole family, they would, they would be ashamed of what's going on. I mean, <laughs> this isn't the America they grew up in. This was, the, this was the land of the free for you to be who you wanted to be and come from nothing and make something of yourself. And it was taught, again, you know, as, as I mentioned when I, in the, um, when I worked up in the, in the Senate, when, the, when they said, you know, if you, uh, you know, you don't do this, you don't bend over and take it, you know, you're not going to make it. You know, my mother, may she rest in peace when I was a little kid. Before I knew what the word meant, she would say to me, I hate cowards. I hate cowards. And again, you know, I was fortunate enough to, you know, I'm the first of the baby boomers. I grew up in the Bronx as the littlest kid, you know, and and being a target for bullies. So you learn how to fight right away and you learn how to be yourself. That's taken out of our society now. Mm. So there would be, this isn't the America that, that was the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now we're all taught to be politically correct, follow orders, this and that. I said this out loud. The Biden campaign picking Kamala Harris to me is racist and sexist. I don't care. If it's a woman, if it's black, if it's white, if it's green, if it's transgender, I could care less. I'm running a business. I want the best person I can have. You're running the country. I want the best people. You're a public servant. You're supposed to work for us, but they got it all twisted around. I mean, again, you know my relationship with you, how highly I respect you. You know, I brag about you all the time about, oh, and she's a woman, isn't that great? That never enters your mind. And, and, but now they've done this to us in the divided states of America. So you ask me how they would feel, they would be heartbroken about what's happened to this country and how divided it is. Again, I, they grew up at a time of, of, of the Roosevelt's, the, 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 the Eisenhower's, the Kennedy's, yeah, they didn't like the Nixons or whatever, but it wasn't, you know, this kind of divisiveness, but it was at one point with the Vietnam War. But again, it wasn't the whole electoral system. You gave me goosebumps again. Gerald Salente, um, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. I know you've been very busy these days and a brand new edition, uh, hitting the streets tonight, uh, trans yes, journal, yes, get yes. it banana Republic 2.0, read it, educate yourself. Gerald, thank you so much. And thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll have much more for you on Stansberry research. So be sure to stay tuned and follow us on all our social media channels. I'm Daniela Camboni.